sport bikes are experiencing a resurgence, particularly in the middleweight category, albeit with a focus on lower-powered and more economical engines. Since the discontinuation of the Daytona 675 or in 2017, Triumph has been absent from the fully fared sport bike market until now. The Daytona 660, launched in April 2025, marks Triumph's return to this segment. However, questions linger. Does it embody the esteemed Daytona legacy? Or is it essentially a rebranded Trident 660? With Supersport racing regulations no longer dictating engine configurations, the middleweight sport bike segment has flourished with accessible and versatile options. Alongside the Daytona 660, models like Yamaha's YZF, R7, Aprilia's RS660, and Honda's CBR650 are offer real-world performance without compromising practicality. These bikes cater to commuters while also excelling on twisty mountain roads or occasional track days. The allure of this new breed of middleweights lies in their ability to blend commuter convenience with sport bike aesthetics and weekend agility. Moreover, their value proposition is enhanced by eschewing high-end components and race-oriented tuning. To assess where the Daytona 660 stands in this competitive landscape, we journey to Alicante, Spain, for an in-depth evaluation. Engine and Electronics The Daytona's engine, while sharing a foundation with the Trident and Tiger Sport 660, boasts significant enhancements aimed at delivering heightened performance. Its inline triple configuration, unique within its class, displaces 660 cubic centimeters with bore and stroke dimensions of 74.0 by 51.1 millimeters and operates on a 240 degree firing order. Triumph's engineers pursued performance gains through a series of meticulous alterations. Internally, the engine showcases a new crankshaft, updated pistons and wrist pins, and a redesigned cylinder head featuring larger exhaust valves. Additionally, a modified exhaust cam with increased lift compared to the Trident enhances performance. On the intake side, the Daytona replaces the Trident's single throttle body with 344mm units and incorporates a larger airbox. The exhaust system sees refinements, including adjustments to the catalytic converter for improved flow and acoustics. These modifications, coupled with a higher redline set at 12,650 RPM, result in a substantial power boost. Triumph claims an output of 95 horsepower at 11,250 RPM, marking a 17% increase over the Trident. Torque figures are also elevated, reaching 51 pound. FT, peaking at 8,250 RPM. With over 80% of maximum torque available from 3,125 to 11,750 RPM. To manage increased performance-induced heat, the Daytona employs a larger radiator, strategically repositioned for optimal cooling efficiency. The drivetrain underwent significant revisions as well, featuring a refined transmission equipped with new input and output shafts, adjusted internal gear ratios, with taller first and second gears, and a reduction of one tooth on the countershaft sprocket. A new slip and assist clutch enhanced control, while an optional upslash down quick shifter is available as an accessory for added convenience. We had the privilege of clocking approximately 120 miles on the Daytona 660 amidst the picturesque mountains of southeastern Spain. Our journey encompassed a diverse array of roads, ranging from swift and sweeping stretches to tight and intricate passages. A gentle press of the starter button heralds the awakening of the iconic three-cylinder symphony that has captivated enthusiasts for years. Navigating through bustling towns and descending into the mountainous terrain, the 660 promptly showcases its versatility and adaptability. With torque readily available from the lower rev range, propulsion is effortless, requiring minimal throttle input as the light clutch lever is engaged. Amidst urban congestion, the engine operates with seamless refinement, allowing for smooth progress through stop-and-go traffic. The engine's linear torque curve facilitates leisurely gear shifts, fostering a relaxed riding experience. Yet, beneath its placid demeanor lies a spirited character, eager to unleash its vigor at the twist of the throttle. Acceleration is delivered with finesse, blending smoothness with assertiveness as the revs climb rapidly. While excelling in low-end torque akin to parallel twin rivals, the Daytona 660 distinguishes itself with its spirited high-rev performance, a testament to the triple engine's inherent versatility. While it may not match the potency of its predecessor, the 675R, in sheer horsepower, the 660's torque output remains commendable, achieving figures akin to the older model but at more accessible RPM levels. 
In terms of rider aids, the Triumph Daytona 660 boasts a modest yet efficient suite. Leveraging ride-by-wire technology, it offers three distinct ride modes, sport, road, and rain, accompanied by switchable traction control and two throttle map options, road and sport. Negotiating European roads, notorious for diesel slick and roundabouts, is made safer thanks to the Daytona 660's effective traction control system, preventing potential mishaps on treacherous surfaces. In essence, the 660's engine and electronics package impeccably meet the demands expressed by riders to triumph, all packaged within a machine accessible to the masses. It's hard to find fault with this stellar engine when put to the test in real-world scenarios, it undoubtedly stands out as one of the top performers with an exceptional sound signature in its class. Chassis In addressing the Daytona 660's chassis, it becomes evident that Triumph faced challenging decisions balancing cost considerations with the inclusion of higher-spec components. Recalling the Daytona 675R, equipped with premium Aline suspension and Brembo brakes, one remembers its hefty $14,000 price tag in 2017. Contrasting this with the 660, it's apparent that the latter adopts a more simplified approach, featuring a steel frame and fabricated steel swing arm in lieu of the 675's aluminum counterpart. Another point of departure from its Trident relative lies in the chassis dimensions. The Daytona boasts a longer wheelbase at 56.1 inches compared to the Trident's 55.2 inches, coupled with a more aggressive front-end geometry featuring 23.8 degrees of rake and 3.2 inches of trail, versus 24.6 degrees and 4.2 inches. In line with industry trends, Triumph opts for economical suspension components both front and rear. The front is equipped with a non-adjustable Showa s fork, while the rear features a Showa monoshock with preload adjustability. Suspension travel measures 4.3 inches at the front and 5.1 inches at the rear. In urban settings, where uneven surfaces, speed bumps, and potholes are commonplace, the suspension system delivers a plush and forgiving ride. In such conditions, there's little default. The bike offers comfort without subjecting riders to the jarring sensations often associated with track-oriented suspension setups. Similarly, when tackling winding roads at moderate speeds, the suspension maintains its composure, ensuring a smooth ride. However, pushing the bike to its limits reveals the inherent limitations of its suspension configuration. While adjustments to the rear shock preload can enhance chassis stiffness to a certain extent, the fork remains unmodifiable. At higher speeds, the fork struggles to adequately dampen compression during aggressive braking, lacking the necessary rebound control to prevent rapid extension afterward. Despite its basic nature, the suspension system performs admirably, especially considering its affordability and target demographic, which prioritizes versatility over pure race track performance. While the Trident features a set of twin-piston brake calipers at the front, the Daytona 660 boasts a pair of in-house branded radial mount four-piston calipers resembling J.1. Thanks for watching. Please like Share and subscribe if you like videos like this. Thank you.